How's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here. And I have my incredible, talented VFX artist friend, Nick Koo. He is based out of Sydney, Australia. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually have him give his opinion on the new After Effects Rotor Brush 2 tool. That is amazing. So I was skeptical that this was gonna work as well as it claimed to be out of the box. I think I saw a demo on Twitter from Adobe where they said, oh, this is gonna be just like this. And they just drew a line around you know, the object and it was just suddenly rotoed. And I was like, as if it's that, I was thinking like, as if it's gonna be that easy. And then I actually tried it in person and it is miraculous, man. Like I actually think this thing is going to literally change the roto game in such a big way. I actually think it's gonna eliminate maybe, honestly, 80% of the work that we've been doing in roto for the last, I don't know, whenever roto was invented, basically. Um, it's, it's, it's remarkable how accurate this thing is. I absolutely hated the first Roto brush tool. They, that's been out for years, like five, six years, I don't even know. Um, I have refused to use it. I have, anytime I've needed to mask something out or rotoscope something, I've always done it the manual way where I just drew a mask and then keyframed the, the mask path. So I, I had no expectations as far as this. I used the Roto brush 2 on iPhone footage that was noisy. It was uh, low res. It wasn't focused perfectly. And it was of one of my bros that was wearing kind of this uh, long flowing top. Um, so it was like whooshing all over the place, you know, all these edges that were incredibly hard to, that would be incredibly hard to track. The Roto brush 2 tool did it almost perfectly the first time without even having to do any adjustments like i had to do minimal adjustments that's always the thing with the rotor brush right you you do adjust you have to do an adjustment like every two frames sometimes you know it's it's horrible yeah it's it's not it's not just that it's just it, i i can't even describe it like it it works exactly how you thought rotor brush one should have worked um the fact that it can actually detect objects and edges in an intelligent way is super surprising and it doesn't look um it looks like the way you think it should look, which is super surprising as well. I'm saying surprising because it just actually floored me. I was doing a couple yeah. of tests actually before we got on this call just to see uh, what kind of stuff it could actually, you know, mask out. Um, I had a little boy riding a bike. And, you know, if you think about it, a bike has a lot of components to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the chain and the spokes and the helmet and the legs moving as the kids riding the bike. No word of a lie, just one pass. It managed to track it per like flawlessly. I, I don't even know how to, I, I just want you to understand to do that in a practical scenario, if you had to do it by hand, it yeah. honestly is a day's worth of work to, to get it to a point where you can actually use the roto in a nice way. I did that in like 10 minutes. It is insane. Wow. Like it is insane how much work that is taking off you off the table basically. Cause you, you might not need to, I mean, you still might need to go in and like do tiny adjustments to get things to be perfect, mm -hmm. but 80% of that work is gone. Like in 10 minutes, you can do that in 10 minutes. The rest of it is just refining stuff or uh, fixing up little things that, you know, I don't think the rotor brush is going to be able to handle. Like the spokes in a, in a, in a wheel is, is going to be tough for anybody to do regardless of whether it's software or, or you know, manually based, but right. still so impressive and this is and this is the beta version too it's not even officially out yet so I, i'm curious what if they're going to even add an, another level of intelligence or add more features when it actually comes out yeah so i read oh sorry i read i watched a video saying that this was all machine learning based and i'm wondering actually which side of the platform is machine learning like is it going to a server in adobe and it's just you know learning all the different objects and types of things it can frame out so that'll be interesting to see mm. uh i mean i i don't really care either way if it's if it's on your computer side or server side i'm assuming server side would be better could you explain but, um, what machine learning means i don't think i know that so effectively the algorithm that's been used to do uh from what i understand used to do the uh roto 2 is um it's not it it continually gets better as it gets fed more information so mm -hmm. if you feed in like right now that's why i guess it's in beta is because it actually benefits from learning as much as it can from all the stuff it's being fed so if you're feeding it lots of objects of people lots of objects of cars signs or just things that it knows that are recognizable objects it will continue to learn what it should roto and what it shouldn't roto basically so wow. i'm assuming if you fed it like a if you feed it enough people it's going to recognize what a, per, a person 
in a particular position looks like and it'll actually intelligently figure out where the edges are supposed to be uh not just like guess not just looking straight at the pixel per pixel which is i think is what roto brush one was it was just mm-hmm. looking at the frame before and the frame after to try and figure out what it should be rotoing but in this case what it's looking for is uh i think it's intelligently looking through the whole picture but also looking at stuff it knows that it's seen previously and goes oh this looks like something i've seen before maybe it's similar to this and applies the same algorithm to it so it's wow. going to be super interesting to see how this goes forward. That's why it kind of work. That's, that's why I'm assuming it works really well. Is because it's actually been trained to look for particular objects like hands or uh, like a nose or eyes or that kind of stuff. It's really it's a lot more intelligent in that regard. What do you think about like I, I've been hearing you know anyone that's been on Zoom or you know you've used like a filter on what Snapchat or Instagram like they kind of already have some really advanced tracking and like compositing abilities that have it hasn't seemed to be translating it hasn't it hasn't been translated to after effects it, 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 do you have any insight as far as that that just seemed like always a weird thing um in my mind no no i i totally i totally get what you're saying um so yeah i i'm actually curious as to what adobe's game is at the moment because they haven't jumped on the bandwagon in terms of embracing some of this real-time technology that's used mm. to do a lot of the tracking i've actually often said that myself why can't i do real-time motion tracking in After Effects to some degree, because it looks, it's really simple. Like, you know, you put a phone in and it automatically tracks someone's face and is able to repaste or remap things onto someone's face. I don't actually understand why that technology isn't embraced within Adobe. Maybe they're working on it. They are, there is a face tracker in a, in, um, there is a face tracker in After Effects. I don't know if everybody knows that, Uh, but it's, uh, I don't really know what the practical applications of that are yet because I only just noticed it was in there maybe a, a couple of months ago and I was like, oh, that's cool. And it tracks mm. things well, but I can't do a deep fake, for example, with it. I have to actually use the proper deep fake uh, software to do it. I'm not sure is the answer. Is um, I, I think mm. that this is a step in the right direction in terms of using machine learning to solve a lot more of these tedious tasks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think... Roto is definitely a perfect area to do that in because everybody hates Roto. I don't, well, there maybe there's some people who like it, but I hate it. Um, and yeah. I I also, it's also hard to get right. Like it's such an easy area to get wrong. Nick, how long have you been doing VFX? And then what are some applications that you feel like you'll instantly be able to put this new feature, this Roto Brush 2 feature into? I've been doing VFX maybe for about 25 years. The, there's no shortage of the fact that there'll be so many applications for this. Good Roto basically is going to get people in the door for a lot more things, uh, particularly when it comes to putting objects behind things, which is the most obvious stuff. But mm. I mean, and it doesn't have to be necessarily, and the, it doesn't necessarily have to be something as simple as a locked off shot. You can do it in handheld stuff and it just adds so much more dimension to what you can do. And you can focus on making the shot look good rather than having to focus on trying to make your Roto look good, which is, not really artistic at all. It's just trying to make things look as good as you can without making the shot fall apart. So mm. this is going to be good in the sense that it's going to take focus away from the labor intensive stuff and focus more and give the tools back to the artist really to just try and make the shot pretty really. And it should be. I mean, there's all, I, you don't, I'm going to misquote this. I'm 100% sure that Steve Jobs said this about how the tools are supposed to get uh, tools are there to basically help the artist uh, to help the artist and get out of the way, essentially. I'm, paraphr- I'm paraphrasing something here. I'm sure it's completely wrong, but makes sense uh, though. Yeah, it's, that, that, that's that's what you want to do. You want these tools to be there to effectively help you help get stuff out of the way, so you can get onto the more important things. Um, but yeah, well, I was joking about the fact that uh, the memes are going to be uh, high. Like people are going to use this to basically make their own memes. I can just imagine people clipping um, characters or you know, actors out of movies and putting them in their own memes. Um, I'll send you one that I just did recently with Yoda, which was great. So easy though, like so easy. Nice. And um, it's got to go everywhere, man. Uh, But yeah, it's the the practical applications for this are enormous, Um, particularly for the roto industry. It'd be interesting to see what they do, Um, you know, because people have, I don't know if you ever watched movies, but there are massive roto teams uh, working on all this stuff behind the scenes. Like they will have a whole team of just, roto artists and yeah uh when when you start in vfx as well um the roto guy is like at the very bottom of the food chain you know it's like the, it's all the grunt work that nobody wants to do right um 
And the fact that they can take that grunt work away from people is, in my opinion, a good thing because, you know, it's great that you learn how to roto, but if a machine can do it better than you can, I think they should. Like, it's just what it's it's such a it's such a laborious job. You know, it's yeah. not really a creative job, in my opinion. Exactly. It's actually it's actually it's like it's almost manual labor kind of. Yeah, if you exactly. think about it, Yeah. Nick, thank you, man. Like, uh, I always look to you, Nick, as far as enlightenment <laughs> in the VFX world goes. Uh, this is awesome. Nick, thank you so much. I'm going to let you go. Um, I know you got stuff to do, but everyone, the future is bright. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.